So here we are. This this um, section here is all about building the temporary system. So this is kind of a really cut down version of Linux from scratch with just the bare essentials that require to build a working system. Um, it's basically just the development tools for compiling and building packages and nothing else. All the other packages are for building uh, a, a system that uh, is usable as an, a fully fledged operating system. So important preliminary material. There's this part here which tells you all about this section. Um, read all the important parts here. Uh, it does say it begins on the real working, the real work of building a new system. It does require a lot of care in ensuring the instructions are followed exactly as the book shows them. If you've never done this before, don't try and deviate from the book. Um, even if you've done it once or twice before and you're still learning, don't deviate from the book. Get to know the system and how it's built a lot more for you. Try to do your own thing. Um, and as I say, you should try to understand what they do, what the commands do. Uh, no matter how how eager you are, I know what it's like. You, you're keen on getting something done, but it tends to be the case that if you start rushing, you can miss things. I've done it myself. I still do it now. Um, you rush things, you miss things. You're not learning as much because you're not giving yourself time to read stuff or take stuff in. Um, and as I suggest, you could use a T utility to keep a track of um, what you're doing as well. Uh, as it says, the next section gives you some very important general instructions. This gives you a great deal of in-depth knowledge into how the compilation process runs, the cross-compiler runs. Um, it's very detailed. It took me, I kind of understood how cross-compiler works, but it took me a couple of read-throughs to really understand it. So it's quite detailed, but the, all, all the information is there. It's a, it's a good, concise write-up on on how it works and indeed you might want to go and read elsewhere on the internet about cross compiling and how it works and why it's done this way and to cut it all down into a few sentences what we're basically trying to do is to build the new Linux from scratch system on the old host system but you don't want the Linux from scratch system to be aware about the host system so you're trying to create the new system without any links to the previous host system and that's the critical thing you don't want to end up trying to boot your new system and it's relying on binaries or headers or links that relate to the host system that it was built on and that's really the the crux of what this chapter this uh page is explaining and why the cross compiler is so important to cut that link between the current host and the new system so I'm not going to go through that because it is a lot of detail, a lot to read. As I say, you probably need to read it several times to fully comprehend it. Once again, let's check the LFS variable is set. It is. We expect it to be because it's in the uh, config file when we uh, enter the environment of the, of the LFS user. And again, two important points that we've checked the host system requirements. If you haven't done that, please go back and check. And if nothing matches or something's wrong, please resolve that first. I can almost guarantee if something's not right there, then you'll have a problem somewhere in the build. Um, almost certainly you will do. These are the key things out of that to ensure that you've got a bash uh, shell and it's not dash or anything else, that you've got sh pointing to bash as a symbolic link, that you've got user bin orc, which is a symbolic link to gork, and uh, user bin yak is a symbolic link to bison or some other script that executes bison. And this re emphasizes the build process. You'll see as we go along what I'll be doing that we've got initially we've got all the sources and patches in a single directory, so let's change to that now. So there they all are, all the source um, packages and all the patches. And what you do is we change the sources directory, which we've done. For each package, you extract them. Um, and you'll see the way I do it. There's slightly different ways you can do it. You can use the combination of the uh, 
program that was used to compress command and tar or tar will understand all these anyway so you can specify just tar telling it to extract them and it will extract and uncompress automatically we then change the directory that's created when we extracted the package we follow the book's instructions explicitly for that package we then go back to the sources and then we delete the directory unless otherwise um, instructed and the reason we delete it is because some packages get installed more than once and we don't want to reuse what's already been produced we want to start fresh each time we compile it and even if something goes wrong I, I tend to delete the source directory start again make the change that I want to change and then carry on from there rather than reusing existing sources so the first part compiling across toolchain and you can see there's a few major packages here and all these packages are part of what's known as the toolchain generally people talk about three uh, packages that are part of the toolchain I like to think of it as four myself they, they being binutils, GCC, the Linux headers and glibc generally the three that people talk about are binutils, GCC and glibc as being part of the tool chain. Uh, like I say, I like to include the Linux headers as part of that because they are still critical. So here we go. As it says, the cross compilation is faked, but it's still using the same techniques as a real cost compilation. It's just the, the architecture is the same. It's not a different cross compilation, which is what a cross compiled tool chain would be uh, used for. So the first package is bin utils. As I say, if you time this one, you'll get an idea of how long one SBU is for you. And if you keep a record of that time, you'll get to a good idea of how, um, especially some of the longer packages, some of the larger packages will take to run. If you want to get it going, for example, go away and do something else for <clears throat> half an hour or something, then it's a good idea to be aware of, uh, have a rough idea of how long a package will take to install. So as before, we're in the sources directory. We need to extract the first file before we follow any of the um, instructions. The first file is binutils 2.38. So we can type in binutils and tab. Now you can see it hasn't auto completed with the .tar, .gz or .xz, whatever it is. So if I press tab again, the reason is is because there's a patch file associated with this package. So we need to specify the remainder of the package which will be a dot and then press tab and you can see we get the rest of the package name. So that's extracted. We now need to change into that directory that's been created with all the files. And there's some of the files there. And now that we're in that directory, we can follow the instructions. So the first part is to create a temporary build directory. And again, I'm not going to dwell on these instructions because I'll, I'll let you read them. But these notes tell you what's happening or what's going on or something that's quite important and occasionally we'll see important nodes where they've put some information that is critical to the build um, and as it says here that if you want to time all these commands you can stack them together with the and and uh, symbols to, to get an overall time so I'll do that to see what an SBU is for this machine to get an idea of how long some of the longer packages will take to build the shorter ones doesn't really matter because they are really short especially on modern machines you know they might only take a few minutes to to install to build and install so it's not really that big a deal it's the bigger packages such as gcc and um you know, possibly glibc Perl, python some of those bigger packages where it'd be more important so i'm going to do uh, normally i'll just copy and paste each of these individual commands wait for them to run and finish and run the next one in but as I say because I want to time it to find the SBU for this package I'm going to do as it says there and wrap it in a time command so I'll do that by typing time open curly bracket and space paste in the first command press space ampersand ampersand space find the next command which is make paste that in space ampersand ampersand space and make install paste that in 
terminate it with a semicolon, put a space in and close the curly bracket we opened. So I'll let that run. So at the moment it's running the configure. Now it's running the compile. And very soon it will be installing and I'll get an idea of the time it takes. So that took 16 seconds is one SPU for this machine. So I'll just make a note of that in case I forget. So 16 second SPU. And that's for LFS 11.1. And that's that package built. So all I need to do now is, as it said, I need to go back to directories because we've created a subdirectory called build where we had to build the package. I'll go back to the sources and delete the bin utils directory. And that's the first package built. So now it's just a case of basically doing the same thing, extracting the package, GCC in this case, changing into the directory that's been created and then following the instructions. So GCC requires three other packages that we've got and we can run these commands here. I'm going to run them all at once because they don't produce a lot of output. So if there were any errors I'll be able to see where the error was. So you can see it's extracted them and renamed them. Then on 64-bit machines you need to make a little tweak a 32-bit machine, you can still run this code, it just won't do anything because it tests to see if the machine is a 64-bit machine. <clears throat> so that's run. Now let's create another temporary build directory and run the configure command. don't need to just stack all the commands together now because I know the SBU. If I look at the SBU, it's 11 SBU, so my SBU is roughly quarter of a minute I can divide that by four. I've got about three or four minutes this should take in total. So I run this configure command. That's completed. There's an explanation there about all the switches that were used for that configure command. And now I'll run the make command to build it. <coughs> Okay, so that's finished building. That was probably a little bit quicker than three or four minutes, more like a couple of minutes really. <clears throat> um, so let's now install the package. And that's that package built. We've got a command to put in here. So there's actually two commands. There's a CD to go back up to the GCC directory and then all of this is one command so we need to copy this all in it's just split over two lines and that's that package done so let's tidy that up 
and move on to the next package which is Linux the Linux kernel and we're not installing the kernel at this point it's just the headers change into it and now we can actually run the instructions in the book and I must say copy and pasting you could just blindly go through the book copying and pasting and not really learning anything when I first started building Linux from scratch I actually typed in all the commands and not only did I learn more about Linux which I was still uh, quite green about at the time um, it helped me learn more about Linux from scratch because I was actually reading the commands that I was typing in and trying to understand what they were doing. So again if you're really intent on learning more about Linux or look more about Linux from scratch in particular then type in the commands although um, it's error prone potentially it does force you to examine what you've typed compare what's in the book and uh, less likely to um, make mistakes by doing that by comparing and taking your time uh, and more likely to learn about the, the process of building Linux from scratch. So that's I'll just check I've done all the commands while I've been talking there. So I've done make MR proper, make headers, find RM and CP. Yep. So that's that package done. And we can move on to the next package, which is glibc. So once again, we extract the package. It's not complete, so let's tab it again. And you can see there's a patch for that one, so we'll just put a full stop in to get the archive name up. Extract that. And we can start with the instructions now. We've changed into the directory. So again, this is all one command. You can see it's made some links there for 64-bit. It does something slightly different for 32-bit architectures. We need to execute the patch to modify the source. That's that done. And once again, we need to create a temporary directory and change into it. A little fix here to ensure some utilities are located in the right place. Prepare the package for compilation with this configure command. And now we can build glibc. This had an SBU of four, so it's only gonna take about a minute or so on this one. Okay, and that's built. Now, there's a big warning here saying if LFS is not properly set and despite recommendations, your building's root, the next command will install newly built GDPC into your host system. So, we are using LFS and we're not the root, so we've got the double protection there. Um, so, if we did run this command and LFS wasn't installed, it would fail because it wouldn't allow us to, as, as the normal user, it wouldn't allow us to run that command. We can double check anyway, it should be set because we've been using it, but you can see LFS is set, we're not the root, so it's it's all good and safe. Okay, that's installed. So next we need to fix a hard-coded path to the executable loader in LDD script. So it's a set command. That's done. And then we've got a big caution box. Um, it's imperative to stop and ensure that the basic functions, compiling and linking, 
of the new tool chain are working as expected. So we run these commands in to verify that all the stuff that we've compiled so far is actually working correctly. So what they've done here is created a dummy C file with that code in it into main. This will compile it and then this will just read some information from that compilation to check that the output is correct and it, as it says here the output should say requesting program interpreter lib64 ld linux dash x86 dash 64 dot so dot and for 64 bit machine that's correct and as it says if you're building on a 32 bit machine it'll be slightly different and if the output is not as above then something's gone wrong I would recommend you start again from the beginning um, rather than risk tweaking something that could cause a problem further down the line unless of course you know exactly what you're doing so clean up the test files which are going to get cleaned up anyway because we're going to tidy up the glibc directory but before that we've got one last command to run so we run that and that's the end of the glibc build so let's Go back to sources, tidy up the glibc directory, and move on to the next package. libstandard C++, which is actually part of the GCC sources, so we need to extract GCC again. Change into it. Once more we create a temporary build directory. We have a configure command here. And when that's finished, we can run the make command to build lib standard C. And it's done. So now let's install that. And that's all complete. So We'll tidy up again and move on.